Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer. I'm going to be your host for the show today. On in today's show, I have Mike Walker with Mike Walker's Lasting Impressions. Uh, it's been a long time since Mike's been on the show, and so we are glad to have him back and look forward to hearing from him and learning about his history and what he's doing now. Um, here's the thing, it's the end of October. And I gotta just tell you, if you have not planned your Branson vacation yet for Christmas, you need to do that. Um, Christmas starts November 1st, runs through January 7th uh, here in Branson. And lots to do, whether it's shopping, the Christmas shows, um, the light drive throughs or Silver Dollar Cities, uh, old time Christmas, there's tons here happening. So be sure to plan your Christmas vacation. We'll be back in just a second with Mike Walker, hang tight. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need ibranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at ibranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782 ibranson.com Hey folks, welcome to Play Branson where you get to know Branson's entertainers better and on today's show I have the one and only Mike Walker. Mike, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's, it's been a long time. Yeah. Time flies so, when you're having fun. It does. Four, I, I looked at it as over four years ago. Wow. There's been a lot that's happened in four years. ton that's happened in four years. Yeah. So um, tell, us, tell us about your history as an entertainer, because there might be people out there that don't, don't know your history, and you've got a pretty good history. Well, the, it's, it starts back when I was... Uh, when I was an embryo, no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I was I was uh, five years old uh, when I first started entertaining, and I was inspired by my mom. My mom was a great singer. She sounds uh, when she sings, she sounds just like Tammy Wynette. Mm. So she has a great voice, and uh, I always been drawn to music. And uh, my mother had a couple of records back then, a Conway Twitty record, and it was the song "Don't Take It Away." And it was on a 45, and I remember just playing that constantly. It was just I, ru I ruined a record. Mm. And then, uh, of course, the other the other record that we had was was the Elvis Moody Blue album. Uh, the first song I ever heard Elvis sing was uh, was Way Down, and that was when he was kind of changing his sound. He 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 had added so much to that particular track because that was one of his going to be one of his releases, and he had been he'd been messing around with. Uh, listening to some of the rock stuff that was happening with the distortion guitars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he kind of was creating a new sound to tour with. So that was kind of attracted to me. To, I was very attracted to that, you know. The So I just got, every, I thought Elvis was cool. So I got every Elvis, you know, thing that I could possibly find. So really and truly, Elvis Presley is the one that, as far as the famous people, that uh, really made me grab a microphone, you know. And so kind of take us were you performing in high school or did you do it after school high school or my mom was uh, my mom was a director of a nursing home and uh, we lived at the time we lived in Columbus Ohio and uh, she she had uh, talked to the activities department she she came into my room one day and I was just I, I was just jamming my mom and dad put this stereo system in my room and because they didn't want to hear it in the house. Yeah. <laughs> my dad was like, turn it down, you know. So they put it in my room and uh, I got to, uh, I was practicing with the songs and my mom came in one day and, you know, I had my eyes closed. I was just singing my heart out and she goes, and I opened them and she's standing there. I'm like, that was weird, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I didn't even hear her come in. And she goes, you really like this, don't you? I said, yes, I do. I love it. I love it. She goes, could you do it in front of, front of uh, a crowd? Because I, I apparently had my eyes closed when she walked in, and she said, "I said, well, I was just doing it in front of ten thousand people before you showed up." Mm, mm. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, she she made some calls, and she goes, "Okay." And she goes, "If you want to do it, I'll put you in front of a crowd, and so to speak." And I said, "Yeah, that'd be great." So, my dad made me a built uh, makeshift stage 
that he could take apart and put it in the back of his truck. He put lights around it and all that, so it was, it was real cool. And we had a big backdrop uh, that went behind me, and it was, uh, <laughs> it was an old Elvis rug of him in the Aloha suit with the border around it. You remember those? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we put that on the back wall as the backdrop. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, my mom started working, booking uh, uh, nursing homes. So I did like every nursing home just about in Columbus, Ohio. And my mom made the Elvis jumpsuit outfits, you know, from uh, old clothes that she found in uh, thrift stores. And so were you, at that point, were you just doing Elvis? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just doing Elvis because that's all I listened to, you know. Okay. And then, uh, and then of course, you know, I was I was working a lot, and it was cool, you know, getting paid. So, uh, from the nursing homes, they were paying me, you know, anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks a, a show, you know, for five years, five, six, seven years old. That's that's freaking amazing. Wow. Right, you know? So uh, we did that, and uh, my dad would put up the stage everywhere I go, and he said he always told me he said, "You won't be singing it. You, if you're going to sing, you're going to be on stage." So he always made sure I was on stage. And my parents were really supportive, you know. They, yeah, uh, that's they, awesome. They, they really did, and they didn't push me to do it. They asked me if I wanted to, and uh, and I was all in because man, there's just something. As an entertainer, there's just, it's almost an addiction, mm. because it it's such a such a rush, for people to to you know get what you're doing and feel that energy that you put off. You know, I can't. I'm going to, uh, you know, when I go to concerts, the entertainment value is everything. I mean, if, if somebody's just going to stand there and sing, I mean, I can play their records and look at a poster. Right. You know, I'm not going to pay a premium price for somebody to just stand there and sing. If I'm going to go to a show as an entertainer, I like to be entertained. And uh, so that's why, you know, this town's so full of those folks, you know, that... Uh, as far as entertainment goes, you know, their entertainment quality is just out the wazoo, man. I mean, yeah. you know, you got one of the greatest entertainers in this town, in my opinion, it was Mickey, Mickey Gilly. I mean, my God, that guy is 80, he was, he, think about this. His, his last show was incredible. I was there. Mm. I bet you that was really special to know that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He was incredible. I mean, he sang his face off. Mm. And, you know, at the end of the show, you know, he was real weak. And he couldn't hardly talk. Mm. But, man, when that music came through, I mean, you didn't even know he mm. was sick. Mm. I mean, he was just incredible. But, but my point to that is, is that people like uh, Dean Z, perfect example of somebody that's in this town that, that has worked it uh, and knows how to work a stage. You know, Delina Ditto is another one in this town. Mm -hmm. Jug Gabriel. There's just so many great performers in this town. But the reason that they're great isn't because of what they sound like. It's, it's not that. It's, it's the connection that they have with the audience. So you cut, you cut your career start on going to nursing homes. Mm -hmm. In and then, front of people. And then what, tell us what happened from there. Because it didn't stop there. No. Um, so... For my 13th birthday, my mom and dad decided to take me to Graceland for my birthday because I, Elvis was my hero, you know. Yeah. So, so it was open to the public. We went down there to, we went up to Graceland, and, or down to Graceland rather. And uh, man, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that was all it was. It was like, oh, you know, <laughs> that kind of deal. I was 13, man, and I, I don't know how many times I cried going through there, you know, like this was his house, you know. Uh, but the funny thing was we stopped in Jackson, Tennessee. That was uh, the home of Carl Perkins. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stopped in there, and we stopped at this little... We all, my mom and dad always carried my equipment where we went, anywhere we went. We carried an outfit and, and my music and, and everything, because we never knew when an opportunity They were prepared. Was yeah, and I told him. I said, "Well, you want to take your stuff in case some." I said, Absolutely, you know, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. So we get to Jackson, and uh, we stop and eat at this uh, place called Abby's in Jackson. It's it's gone now, long gone. But uh, the guy that owned the place had a television show, and uh, my dad, my dad was always he goes, "Hey, you think you want to sing in here?" And I'm like, 
it was like a, it was like a, uh, <laughs> it was amazing. It was like a, a Waffle House kind of thing. It stayed open all night, you know, just about. And uh, so my, my dad said, I'll go see if, you, if, you, if they care if you sing. I'm like, okay, cool. So that he walked up, walked up to the owner and he asked, he said, you care if my son uh, sets up the equipment in here and sings for your crowd? You got a big crowd. He goes, sure. <laughs> so At this point, did he know he had this TV show? Uh-uh. Okay. Not a clue. Okay. So so we, we uh, there's a day's end hooked to this uh, restaurant. So my dad said, well, we'll just stay the night then if he says okay. And he said, okay. So he went up and asked the guy. And he said, sure. So we, my dad went across, got a hotel room, and we stayed the night. I went up and changed to come down. They had all the equipment set up, and there I went. And then after I got through with uh, my first little set where I needed a break or bathroom break or whatever, this old man, the whole place was packed. And the old man took his hat off and took it around the room and, and collected money. We get the hat yeah. and we go around the room and, you know, I think I made like 150, 200 bucks. And after that, the guy was like, good gosh, man. So he come over to the table. He goes, man, he goes, I wish I'd have known about this. He goes, I've got a television show. And, uh, it's called Around the Golden Circle with Big Jim Cheatham. Man, I found, we went to my storage unit this weekend and we were digging through stuff trying to get it out and I found the video, the huh. VHS tape of that. Performance. Yeah, and oh I'm my. excited. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm kind of. You gotta find kinda, a VCR player. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Uh, but man, it was amazing. I was like, wow, this is crazy. So hopefully it still works, you know. Uh, but uh, so my dad says, well, when's your, when's your television show? Well, we do it on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. My dad was like, oh, okay. So we, we were going to go to Graceland. So we got up the next morning, went to Graceland, and we started coming back. We stopped back in the restaurant. And uh, my dad said, uh, would you be able to have him on next week's show? He said, sure. He said, well, we'll be back. So we drove all the way back to Columbus. My dad worked, my mom and dad worked all week long. And then we left on, on uh, Friday, came and stayed at the Days Inn on uh, Friday night, Saturday night, and got up Sunday morning and did the show. And I guess during that time, my mom and dad thought about it. And uh, Memphis is a big music mecca, and so is Nashville. Jackson just happened to be the rockabilly mecca. Mm. So... You had country and rock and roll all in one area, and uh, they they saw fit to pick up and move to Jackson. And so, that's then where you, like, because you have been inducted into the International Rockabilly Hall of Fame in Jackson. That's right. Uh, that was a shock. That was amazing. Uh, that happened in two thousand and uh, Thir thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Good lord. But. Uh, I was not expecting that. We were doing a show, and the the mayor told us that uh, they had something special for us. And I was like, okay, cool. So they brought this whole thing in, and they had me come down to the Rockabilly Hall of Fame, and they said, we'd like to induct you into the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. And I was like, what? You know, it was so freaky yeah. for me, because, man, yeah. you know, I... I, the, the many things that I've done, to me, I, they're, they're, the importance of those things, I guess I don't see as that kind of important. You know, it, for me, it was just a way to perform and sing and, and be able to share my love and passion for music with other yeah. people. I tell you what, here's a good place. We're going to stop here. We're going to be right back with more with Mike Walker. Hang tight. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We're talking to Mike Walker. Now, Mike, I, I want to talk a little bit about your show today. And if we have time, we'll come back and talk some more history because you have a lot of it. But you have this show called Lasting Impressions. Yes. And 
I have heard a rumor that you do at least 50 impressions. We've talked a lot about Elvis, but right. you do a lot of stuff beyond Elvis, and you've had, and, and, and you've also had your own album with your own stuff on it as well, mm -hmm. right? So talk, talk about the show and impressions and all well, that stuff. Well, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, is uh, when people talk to me about my show and stuff, well, who's your favorite? Well, I, I don't really have a favorite because I like all the people that I do on my show. They had some sort of influence on me growing up. And a uh, funny story how I started doing impressions in the first place was when we moved to Jackson, I, I, I was putting together a band to do some stuff. And uh, I was like 14, 15 years old. And I had a group of guys that we put together and we went out to do this pool party. And I'll never forget this guy's name was Bob Franklin, one of the richest guys in Jackson. And uh, I was out there doing this pool party and I had started learning some other stuff, some other music. You know, like some of my favorite singers on the radio at the time, I started listening to them, like Joe Diffie and uh, Travis Tritt and uh, Marty Stewart and all these great acts, you know. And so I, Ricky Van Shelton, gosh, all of those guys. And so I, we, we incorporated those songs into this little thing that we were doing. And he had a lot of it. A lot of people that came came that night, but there was this really drunk guy. <laughs> he walks over to me, and he, and we just finished the set, and he says, "Hey, you know who sang that last song, don't you?" I said, "Yeah, uh, Travis Tritt." He goes, "I I just if I was you, I just let him do that one." <laughs> and so, and so and so you know a lot of people would have been discouraged by that. Not right. me though. I'm special. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, I went and got a couple of recorders, uh, tape recorders. Those, remember those flat ones? They used to push the buttons down? Yes. Well, I had bought two of those. So I started playing my favorite singers on one of them and recording myself sounding like them on the other. Mm. So I just started doing that till I couldn't tell the difference between them and me. And wow. then I would just add that to the thing. And I think we got into the, my wife and I, we were driving to some gig or something like that. She goes, hey, I got an idea. Let's see how many of these things you can do. How many voices you can do? I'm like, okay, uh, go ahead. So she started putting on songs and things like that. And I was, we got to about 200 and something. And I said, there's no way that I'll ever do this many in the show. So there's no reason to count. This is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I think it's, well, just the fact that you can do that many or even over 50, that's a rare quality. Like, there's not a lot of people that can do that. Well, the thing, though, is that if you don't do that and you sing these other people's songs, it's not going to be good enough for those people watching you. Mm. Because their ear is attuned to what they heard. It's like when you go to a concert by somebody that's really famous. I've done this several times. And you go, you go to these concerts... Uh, there's a couple of those concerts that was just so disappointing because you like these people so much and you grew up with their songs and you go to their concert and they perform these songs, but they've, they've rewritten the melody and, and, mm. and they've redone the construction of the yeah. song. And it's like, it didn't need any help. That's why I'm here. You know, I want to hear yeah. it the way that I heard it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Mickey's one of those guys that he tries to do he always tried to do the songs like the record yeah and and you know there's several artists that do that so i prior to this i went on TripAdvisor and i said what are people saying about mike walker and every one of the reviews that i looked at was a five star and it was awesome show it's unbelievable like like every one of them and so i think that's Man, just that's, a awesome. that's just a testament of how how good you do. And of course, not everybody that goes to a show posts on TripAdvisor, but for people to go and post and then them all that's to be- That's a lot of work. All to be fives, it is a lot of work. And so I think that's just the testament to the type of entertainer that you are. Um, I'll say and, this, I'll say this. The, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time and the, the fans, the ones that, that I've accumulated over the years, there may be people that have as good of fans as I do, but there's not anybody that has better fans than me. Because yeah. these people, I mean, I, I, I ask the audience sometimes, and I'm like, I can't believe, you know, how many of you have seen my show before? 
And the amount of return business that I've been getting is just, I mean, it's just breathtaking because, you know, for, for there to be that much to do in this town and for them to spend their, because man, I know how hard it is to earn a dollar in this town or yeah. in this, in this old country or in the world for that matter. You know, it's, it's a lot of, they, they work hard for their money in these smaller towns and, uh, you know, they take that money and they, they buy a ticket to see somebody like me, you know, that's, and they do it over and over again. It's just, to me, that's just, it's amazing. And I'm just grateful. Yeah. So you've been here 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, you have several albums out. And so here we have Mike Walker, the 20th anniversary edition. Um, and this was on DreamWorks mm -hmm. Nashville. Yep. Um, and people can go to either your show or to the website and you here's a Christmas album. That was a fun album. Uh, yeah. that, that, that album there, my wife and kids are on that album. And then here's soul music. So you got a bunch of different stuff. Um, and your website, what's your website? It's uh, Mike Walker, M T H dot com. Okay. And so they can go there, they can find out that, or they can, I'm sure they can go to the, and get this at your show sure. as well. And, and so I, I travel quite a bit too. So you can find on there you can find the, uh, the tour dates and stuff that I that I've been doing. Yeah. So. so if someone wants to come see you in Branson, they can go to the Hamner's Variety Theater on Shepherd of the Hills, and your shows there are typically Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at, at two p.m. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leaves it open then for you to go on weekends to do other gigs, other places. Yeah, and you know I love to go out on the road. Um, it, it, it's almost like an ambassadorship because. Right. When I go out there, I take my pamphlets, I pass them out and you know, say, hey, you gotta come to Branson. You'd be surprised how many people that I've run into that have never even oh, heard of this place. It's a lot of places. This yeah. should be the number one town in America. It should, it should. We just need to have more marketing dollars, right? Um, there's, I meet people every day that they have no clue what Branson is. Now, if they're primarily East or West Coast, most people in the Midwest know about Branson. Now, real quick, I also wanna talk about, you're in another show, which is called Statler Brothers Revisited. Mm -hmm. Monday and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Give us a quick overview of what that show's like. Well, I've been, we've been doing that show now for almost 10 seasons. Um, it's, it's a quartet, live band, uh, and we just pay tribute to the Statler Brothers. The thing about this show that makes it different than any other Statler Brothers show or any other show that pays tribute to an artist is that you also get the history of the, of the artist in itself. Uh, Roy, Roy Morris, is the, uh, he's the MC of the show. Mm -hmm. And he tells this, he's a great history of the group. I didn't even know half of this stuff, you know, it's just great. It's just a great yeah. show. If you love, if you like quartet music, if you like the Statler Brothers and you like history, it's a great show, great show. Mondays and Thursdays at uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. At the um, Hamners. So you're, both of those shows are at the same theater. Now, um, 50 Impressions, is that what we're gonna see in your show? Is it about that or more? It may or less. Be. It just depends. <laughs> it just depends, depends on the audience because, uh, you know, sometimes I'll ask the audience what they want to hear, and, and uh, you know, if I can do it, I'll grab my guitar because yeah. I have a guitar on stage too, to where I can do impromptu stuff. So there's never, never, there's never ever a show that's exactly the same. So could you give us something impromptu right now, of some in, just an impression of something? Uh, sure. Uh, one of my favorite singers is Conway, of course, and mm -hmm. you know, Conway had. People see us everywhere, they think you really care, but myself I can't deceive, I know it's only make believe. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. I love when entertainers will just do stuff like that on the spot. And the D, uh, that's all, folks. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Folks, we will be back. Well, first of all, just a reminder, go see Mike Walker, Lasting Impression Show, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays at 2 p.m. over at the Hamner Variety Theater. That's on Shepherd of the Hills Expressway, kind of across from the Pierce Arrow Theater over on the north side of town. So be sure to go check them out. We'll be back in just a moment with more. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877- Entertain. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com.
Hey folks, welcome back to the show. We want to thank Mike Walker for coming today. And I'll, I'll be honest with you folks, we did not get every, to everything I wanted to get to. Mike's had um, several hits on the radio. Um, he, he's just done a bunch of stuff. And I know he's got a book out there as well. Um, and so go see the show, pick up some of his albums. He's got some original music on some of them. I do know that. Um, and uh, you can see his show Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 2 p.m at the Hamner Variety Theater on Shepherd of the Hills. Once again, I went on TripAdvisor, everybody was five star, just ranting and raving about his show. Just being able to do over 50 impressions is just, to me, amazing. He also does the Statler Brothers Revisited show on Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, we still have a couple special limited engagement shows coming up this year. Um, we've got Matt Gum and Company in December. Uh, the Malpass Brothers in November over at the Clay Cooper Theater, and then at the Mansion Theater. Uh, we still have several dates this year with the Oak Ridge Boys. The Gatlin Brothers are there mid-November, November 18th. The Bellany Brothers, November 19th. Gene Watson, November 11th. We've got um, uh, Daniel O'Donnell as well, November 2nd through the 17th over at the former Welk Resort Theater as well. So lots of special events, lots of great Christmas shows right around the corner here in Branson. If you haven't been to Branson, you gotta come. And you need to let the folks at ibranson.com help you. They can help plan your entire trip. You can book it all online 24 hours a day or you can call them at 877-ENTERTAIN. You can talk to a local expert about the best way for you to experience Branson. There's no other place like this in the entire country. It's amazing, you gotta come. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week here on Play Branson. <music>